All right, getting WTF OSD on the DJI goggles with the ability to render the entire Betaflight OSD was really awesome. But after setting it up and it looking like this, eh, it's a little underwhelming. Well, no longer in Betaflight 4.4. You can make it go from this to this and even using those little black sidebars. Betaflight just released RC candidate, release candidate number one for Betaflight 4.4. So the first step you need to do is go to the link down in the video description and download the latest configurator. If you're watching this video in the future, of course, just download the latest version of the configurator you find at the link down below. It's gotta be version 10.9 to run Betaflight 4.4 and to use this new feature. As a side, if you are downloading it in the release candidate version, you will probably need to do upgrades. You may want to get the portable version that's shown right there. That way you can just download that, unzip it, put it on a location on your desktop, run the executable right from that folder. And when updates in the release candidates come along until you get to the stable release, you can just download the, the latest portable version of it. You don't have to do all the install stuff. So in this video, we're going to assume you know how to download the configurator, flash your flight controller up to the latest version of Betaflight so you can get on 4.4 if you're not on 4.4 or you're already on Betaflight 4.4. If you do need help on that topic, I'm going to make a link to a video down in the video description. Check that out. That will show you how to get the configurators and all that kind of stuff and flash your quad up to 4.4. But in this video, we're going to get right into the meat of how to set up MSP Display Port so you can get that larger HD OSD settings. So the first thing you need to know, just like always, you're going to need to know what UART you have your Vista or Air unit hooked up with to your flight controller. On this quad, that is UART 1. Typically, you'd have this MSP enabled for that port, whichever you have your Air unit or Vista plugged into. That's typically in the past what we've had. Uh, we're going to still have that MSP checked on for that, but we're also going to come over here to the right hand side and then pick this drop down on our peripherals to select the VTX MSP plus display port. So select that and then go ahead and hit save and reboot. From there, and this may get better over time, but as of right now, it's uh, we need to set two variables in the CLI to make this work. So the first we're gonna look at is hit get display. And then you see this OSD display port device. That by default is set to auto. So we would copy that and you can see I already have it changed here. I'm just gonna copy that line, type in set, and then change that to MSP, like I already had it set. Yours would say auto, hit okay, or hit enter to accept that. The next thing we're gonna look at is the VCD command. So again, type in get VCD, and this would also be set to auto. Basically it's communication from the flight controller to the air unit of what type of canvas it's using to uh, draw the OSD on. So for that, we're gonna type in again set, and we're gonna change that from auto to HD, hit enter. Now with both those entered in, we're gonna type save, gotta make sure you type save, hit enter, and that will actually save those uh, two command changes. From there, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna go into the OSD and select this new option here off to the right where it's HD. So typically we had the options of auto, pal, NTSC, but now there is a new HD option there that will give you a larger canvas. And from there, you just move your OSD elements. You can see I'm off the screen here a little bit uh, where they need to be. And uh, yeah, you should be off to the races. If you haven't rooted and installed WTF OSD on your V1 or V2 goggles, you will need to do that for this to work, just to have the OSD experience at all. So to go into that, again, I'll drop a link to a video I have on that down in the video description, but I would recommend that if you haven't checked your updates recently, I would do that and make sure you have the latest version. So connect your goggles back up, go to fpv.wtf, and then it has to be on Google Chrome or uh, Edge, and then go to this updates tab here, uh, right in the selection here, and just make sure that you are everything up to date. It should be on uh, version 0.8, I believe is the latest, or whatever the latest version is that you're watching this video. Now, if you want the ability to save your OSD information and render it over top of the DBR video, I'll drop a link down to this website as well and a video link on this where you can enter some additional commands you can see here. It will save a .osd file and then this website here, which is in beta yet, but works great every time I use it. You can load the video, the OSD file and the font files right here. And then you hit start here and it will render overlay that and save that onto your computer wherever you tell it to save it. You know, what I do is I don't 
overlay it all the time, but I always have that OSD file. So if I have a quad go down, I can always bring my goggles back and look at that to see, get some more information. If I couldn't find it, for example, uh, I could overlay those two files on there and maybe see where the last, you know, where it was kind of going down or if I had GPS coordinates, things like that. So it's a good thing just to always record that OSD data. And again, to start to record that stuff, you have to put this in the OSD command. Again, I'll drop a link down to a video where I go through all that. Finally, if you have been using the WTF OSD and the overlay with the OSD elements, the beta flight before this HD version of it, and you have some of these font files on your SD card, I've noticed it does not work with those font files on there, and you really don't need them. I mean, they, some, the, the sneaky ones, the sneaky fonts that are out there um, in the community, again, linked in the video description for a video that talks all about that are really nice still but with the fonts being smaller even these more drab fonts are acceptable in flight and again you can render uh in post any of the fonts onto it so what you see in the goggles may not be what you then render and show up to youtube or whatever you do with it later so long story short as of right now with these font files on the root of your sd card in the goggles it does not seem to work so we're going to go on ahead and clear those off of here but with these cleared off latest os wtf osd and all the other little settings we talked about you should be set and ready to go okay well that was it hopefully you found that helpful if you have any questions don't hesitate to drop them down below and as you can see here how you can render these with the, any of the font files so although that's not the fonts i saw in the goggles because it had to wipe those off of the sd card you can still do the overlay uh processing uh, with the fancy font files and upload it to youtube or do whatever you want with it big thanks goes out to steve evans for implementing the hd canvas uh, in betaflight configurator and in the firmware to support this and of course the wtf osd uh, developers to hand in hand and work with steve in that uh, to make this possible for all of us if you're interested in more Betaflight 4.4 content, I will be having a bunch more coming out on the channel. So please do make sure to subscribe. If you're interested in some of the more advanced videos on it, uh, please do check out my Patreon. I typically put a little extra bonus content for those guys. With that, thanks everybody, and I hope this helps.